Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here then hi, my name is Miss Paris and on my channel you can find tips, advice and information all about teaching as well as being able to follow along with my own personal journey. Now I have been very neglectful of this channel this year and for that I can only apologise. Um, it is the 18th of July, we have when's it, three more academic days of the academic year, I don't know why I said it like that. Um, so today I thought that I would talk about the main lessons I have learned this year. And this is one of those things that is constantly changing. Um, and do you know what, probably mid-August when I've been reflecting on the year, I will probably have more to add to this video. But it's really something to think about. Now, believe it or not, this is actually my first class um, since I'm qualified that I've had for a whole academic year from September all the way to July. And one of the most important things that I've learnt, which is always repeated to you, but I don't think you understand how important it is until you have them from day one, is to set those expectations, set those routines. Um, it sounds silly and people outside of the classroom don't understand, but actually even just the routine of lining up, even the routine of walking around the school, what do you expect? What are you looking for? What behaviors should the children be showing? It's really important for you to establish this from day one. And you see it straight away. The moment the children aren't necessarily with their teacher, or maybe it's a, a different situation to lining up than normal, straight away they go, are we in line order? Are we, you know, does it matter who we stand with? Which door are we going from? And straight away it kind of throws their focus. So routines are crucial. So if I give you an example, as a school, we really highlight the importance of being able to see the front and the back of your line, which may seem impossible when you've got 26, 7, 8, 9, 30 pupils, but actually it is possible. And what we do is we stand in the middle, we start off our line, then we stand in the middle so we can see both ends. And my children know which radiator, which door to stand by at every point, whether they are going to the hall or lunchtime or whether they are going out of the school. They also know what expectations are expected of them, what they should look like, how they should be acting, what their volume should be. It's all really, really important. Lining up is just an example. You can also have cleaning up routine, transition routines. I have a thing which, I don't know if I developed it from September, but I found this to be really effective, is to break down things into steps. Because anyone will tell you, if you give them too many steps at once, they go at different paces, it's all over the place, some children forget, especially if they might be slower at information processing. So I split things up into three different steps, and I would go, one is stand up, two is tuck your chair in, three is line up at the door in line order. And gradually over time, you would just remove the verbal part. So let's say we've stopped, we've closed our books, the books are away, I would just go like this. Make sure they all do it. If anyone isn't, I would prompt them. Two and then three. So those routines, those structures that they can thrive on, which minimizes their decision making, or where do I go, what should I do, what should I say, it is so helpful for them. And I'm in year three and it still works, let alone if you're in reception year one, even in year six, all of these things can help tremendously. And there is no real right or wrong answer unless it's something dictated by your school as to how you should do things. But I think you should try and be consistent as much as possible. If you say something, follow through. And I guess that's also a second thing. Um, children will know if you mean something or not. So if you say, if you do this, this is your consequence. You need to follow through with it. It's not, oh, I feel really, really tired. I'm just not going to give you a consequence for that action today because then it gives them mixed messages. So I guess that was a tangent number two. Number three is, and I really get why it is in the teaching standards because it is so important, is adaptive teaching, which when I was training used to be called differentiation. Now, just to give you some context, um, in my school, in my year group, um, we have 53 pupils and out of those 22 are not at age related expectations. They're not even working on the year three curriculum. Not in all subjects. We have more working on year three maths than we do in English. Um, but for that reason, every single thing needs to be accessible. And loads of things, I've made an Instagram reel about this, but loads of my things have widgets all over the place. If it is something where writing is not essential, that's not the objective. So let's say a wider curriculum subject, RE or Spanish or PSHE, for example, if they're really not confident in writing, it's really important to make sure that's not an obstacle. And 
I, no, I never actually had a TA. We used to share a TA and then one of my pupils ended up with a one-to-one. -one, so I've never really had a TA. So I've got some children working at EYFS level in a year three classroom and you really start to be able to, to juggle things. So I go right to do this independent task with this lot. So they are just going to do that silently. I'm going to work with this group. Then we swap. Then we do marking of each of them, make sure they tick it. Then I would go around, check for any misconceptions, etc., etc. So it's really important to be able to make learning accessible, make sure that every child in their own right can make progress. And that it is also important for you to be able to juggle it. Don't think, okay, I've got EYFS year one, two, three to have to cater to. I'm gonna do four different worksheets, four different, different objectives. It's not attainable and you will wear yourself very, very thin. So it's really important to get that balance right. And if people want more details on this, I'm happy to make a video on that as well. Tip number four of lessons that I've learned this year or things that have really been enforced um, and emphasized this year for me is the importance of knowing where your lessons are going. Now, a really good tip for planning is to plan backwards. Think about your end objective and then plan backwards. What objectives do you need to meet? What things do you need to model or explain to them before they can make that final product or write that final piece? And at the beginning of the year, I found we've got like a medium term plan already written for us by SLT. Um, but I sometimes found those objectives quite vague or subjective um, and I was like I don't actually know where I'm going this, with this it could be really really flexible and I actually found that planning took me so much longer as a result of that and it was clear that when I wasn't really sure what I was doing or if I didn't feel confident then it showed in my planning and that created doubts for my year three partner because she was like so what where is this actually going what, what am I what do you want me to model and as a result of me being unsure I would overcompensate I made these really detailed powerpoints these really detailed lesson plans and it took me ages it would take me all weekend to maybe do three lessons so I think Highlight it again, really, really important. Know where you're going with it. Even if you're following somebody else's plan, if you're not sure, ask them, what end product do you want to see? Or what would this end product look like? It's really important to just ask questions. And I think that since I've been here, we've changed head teacher three times. And with our laces head teacher, we are constantly asking questions, which for them must be really stressful. Um, but actually it has made our teaching and learning so much more succinct, so much more precise. And actually in the long run, it really supports with pupil progress. My fifth and final thing, because I wanted to keep it a really nice short video that hopefully those that are going into their ECT year or maybe just people that are going into their fourth year of teaching like me um, can maybe just have something to relate to and be like oh do you know what I get that as well my fifth thing and actually it's very relevant to what's behind me is zones of regulation now I have been very honest with my pupils this year I have had moments where actually I've been red zone which is kind of angry and not ready to learn, not ready to focus, grouchy, whether that's hangry because it's that time of month, um, because it's like a greenhouse in here at times. Um, and I've been really honest with them. And I've actually modeled how to identify my emotions, how to cope with that in front of them. Before it was always like, okay, teachers are the best actors. Um, you just have to hide your emotions, all that kind of stuff. But sometimes it's really difficult to do so. Let's say you've had um, a child have, you know, um, a, a kind of a breakdown almost, or a lesson's not going to plan. And you, it does get to you, you're only human. And I say this to my pupils. I say, do you know what? I am actually feeling red zone right now. I'm gonna take some deep breaths. So do you mind just giving me a second? Or if everyone is kind of yellow zone, we're all a bit fidgety, we're all a bit hyper, I will get all of us to do a brain rick on the same time. We will focus on our breathing. All my children understand the zones of regulation. Even a child that only, I think, 12 weeks ago came from Nigeria, they can identify now what they're feeling, what the zones of regulation are. And it's really, really important to just show that you're human. You know, if uh, I have in the past, and I don't know if this was right for me, but the, the children understand it. You know, a lesson has really gone bad, they're not listening. And I just, I got the lesson plan up for them. And I said, guys, look at what we do. We make this lesson plan and this is, you know, I went through every single part of the lesson. This is what the starter should be. This is what I wanted to go through with you. And unfortunately at the moment, I'm not able to do that because I can see that a lot of people are in yellow zone. 
Now that makes me blue zone, which is obviously sad, um, because I worked really, really hard on this and I would like to show you all the things I've prepared. However, we need to work as a team. So actually, it's become less of knowing we're an individualist society. We, I've tried to create a kind of unity between us where I can see how they're feeling and I try and adapt the situation accordingly or they can see that I'm feeling, you know, not with it. And there have been notes where it says, oh, sorry, Miss Paris, that you're feeling blue zone or Miss Paris, I feel red zone. Please, can I have a brain break? And I'm like, that is so powerful for them to know how they are feeling, identify and actually think of a solution for themselves. And I think that's one of the lessons that by accident, I guess, I've, I've really learnt, you know, this, I've, I was introduced to this in my psychology degree, but actually incorporating it into your classroom, and not just as a display, but really incorporating it into the entire culture, into their minds, and being like, right, I can feel I'm fidgety right now, what might I need? What zone might I be in? How could I help myself? Oh, I'm going to let Miss Paris know and ask for a brain break. You know, this not only develops them as humans and prepares them for more stressful events in their lives when they're like, okay, I'm overwhelmed, what can I do? But it also helps the efficiency of your classroom. If you can see that actually everyone's yellow zone and they're not listening, they're bubbly, they're fidgety, you can't get them to listen into an input, adapt to that situation. Wow, right, well, I hope that was useful for you. Please let me know what lessons you've learned this academic year. I hope you have an amazing holiday and I will see you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check back soon. Bye.